Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm here with a Q&A video. So I asked you guys to share your questions and things that you wanted to ask me over on Instagram and I'm going to answer all of your questions here. I'm going to be mixing in those questions with also some other questions that I've been asked in YouTube comments. I always answer all my comments so I would give a short answer over there, but that I wanted to go into detail more, but weren't quite a big enough topic maybe to make their own YouTube video around this question. But if you think otherwise, if you would like to know more about any of these things, they probably could make their own YouTube video, so be sure and leave me a comment down in the comments below and let me know if you'd like to know more about any of these topics that I'm going to talk about when I answer your questions. First question is more of like a how-to answer. Somebody wants to know how to make yogurt in the Instant Pot. So it's very easy in the Instant Pot. The one thing that you want to make sure if you're making yogurt for the GAPS diet, since you want to have it culture for at least 24 hours, is to not go with the default 8 hour setting on there, but to push the plus button enough times to where it goes up to 24 hours. That way you don't have to worry about waiting for the 8 hours to end and then remembering to go put it on for the remaining time and keeping track with all that. Just bump up that time to 24 hours. And if you have the regular name brand Instant Pot, you should be able to do that. Other than that, the steps are exactly the same as my yogurt making video that I have already on my channel, where you, if you're using raw milk, you don't need to heat the milk. You just add your starter, so it can be yogurt from a previous batch or some nice natural yogurt from the store if you're starting it for the first time, or a powdered yogurt starter. Mix that into your milk. You want at least a quarter of a cup. I usually go more like half a cup or sometimes even more. Mix that in well, put on the lid, set your time, and then let the Instant Pot do the rest. And then once the time is up, you'll wanna move it to the refrigerator and let it cool down. That'll let it firm up a bit before you eat it. The next question is, how does eating animal fats improve skin? So this is a really good question and it's actually pretty simple. So I've talked before about how using products like tallow balm on your skin helps your skin. All of those amazing fat soluble vitamins and the nutrients that really help with skin structure and regeneration and then all the different minerals and different things that something like that has help, can definitely help from the surface. But when you're eating those animal fats, it helps in a similar way. So by feeding your body all those nutrients, it's like nourishing your skin from the inside out. So all those same nutrients will help your skin in the same way. And I'll have one of those videos linked below where I talk about how those nutrients work and what they are specifically, but it's gonna work the same way. So you're eating them, you're just feeding your skin from the inside out. And there's also more benefits to eating animal fats too. They help with healthy liver and gallbladder function, lots of other things. Having a healthy liver is one of the best things for having a healthy skin too. So that is the short of it of how eating animal fats improves skin. Here's a really good one that I've been wanting to talk about for a little while. So I mentioned in a video I did a while back, I think it was where I was talking about what supplements I currently take, I talked about how um, my migraines have been gone for good. So basically what I did, and I have other videos where I talk about how taking raw beef liver on a regular basis keeps migraines away, and in that video I talked about at that point in time if I slipped up and forgot to take it for a period of time or just didn't take it or whatever, then if something happened that puts me over the edge, like stress or eating the wrong thing or something, then I could still get a migraine. But I have been focusing on liver support. So that is really what I've done that 
has made it to where I really haven't gotten any migraines no matter what. And so last summer, last spring, and then I graduated in the summer, I took the training from Dr. Natasha to become a certified GAPS coach. And in that, I learned the kind of the rest of the stuff that I was sort of missing the first time that I went through GAPS about 10 years ago. And my liver still needed some more support, and that was why I was still getting those migraines. The beef liver helped because it supplied all those B vitamins that my body really needed, but my liver still needed some support. So I learned more about that. It was like the missing piece that I still needed to kind of address. So the things that I did, I was still nursing my toddler then, so I didn't go whole hog with this because there's more things that you can do, but if you're nursing or you're pregnant, you definitely want to be very careful because dumping toxins can really influence the baby. It can go through the milk, it can affect an unborn baby, it can be dangerous for them. So you want to be really careful. So I was really gentle, but still very, it still was very effective. So what I did was I started juicing again. I started doing carrot juice and then I was making the gaps shakes. So I was adding raw egg yolks and cultured cream. It was grass-fed cream cultured with kefir culture, a big dollop or two of that, whisking all that together and drinking it first thing in the morning, doing that for a while. I was also prioritizing sleep, doing more Epsom salt baths, skin brushing, all the really gentle detox things that I could do to really help my body. So if you're not pregnant or not nursing, there are of course other things that you can do that really help your liver too. You can do some cleansing enemas and get your body ready for coffee enemas. Those are powerful. I know enemas are not something that people usually talk about these days, but they are powerful. But that's not something that I did because I was nursing him and I didn't want to make my liver flush out a lot of stuff. So I stuck with the gentle things. Another really gentle thing that you can do is drink dandelion root tea. I didn't do this at that time because I didn't want to be doing too much, but later on, I did drink some dandelion root tea, and so I think all those gentle liver support things really did help to where I feel like it's in a much better place, and I, I haven't gotten migraines. Really thankful for that, and that's what I did. Next question is, what is my take on fasting? And this is a really good question. So I'm going to go with what Dr. Natasha says and that is to listen to your body. Above all, listen to your body. Eating frequently has benefits. Fasting for different amounts of time absolutely has benefits. But how do you know what you need to do? Dr. Natasha says, listen to your body. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Maybe drink some bone broth or some lemon water or just plain water. Really listen to your body. When we do that, it's so powerful. It takes the mystery out of so many things, and so that's my take on fasting. It can absolutely be beneficial, but if it feels right, and if it feels like what your body wants, that's when I would consider it. I wouldn't force myself to do something that I didn't feel good with or didn't feel right, but absolutely there can be times for that. Even a short time, like having a later breakfast can be considered fasting. If you didn't eat since dinner, you went all night and then had a later breakfast just because you weren't hungry first thing in the morning, that's a form of fasting. And then you could, it could go longer if you wanted to. There are some really good benefits to it, but I would just always listen to my body. I haven't been in that situation for quite a long time because I've been pregnant or nursing and I've, I've just been needing to eat very regularly all for the past, you know, whatever number of years. So I haven't personally done a lot of experience with it, but maybe at some point in my life I will, and I'll have more to share. But for now, that's my take on it. The next question is, what do we do for exercise? This is a really great question too. So we, it's pretty, energy intensive, just keeping up with our day-to-day -day life, taking care of little kids, taking care of our chickens, and then depending on what time of year, if we have a garden going, those kind of take priority for me for exercise, but I also do like to fit in walking a lot. Another thing that I like to do is 
some type of gentle stretching. Now I don't go into like the whole philosophy and belief system behind something like yoga, but just doing the stretches that are associated with, I, could, I find helpful. So I will fit those in sometimes, especially when I'm pregnant, I have this routine on a video of all different kinds of stretches and things that are helpful for getting your body ready for birth. So I will do that sometimes, sometimes I'll fit it in other times, and then walking, and that's pretty much the extent of it. So we don't try beyond that to fit in too much other exercise, we just try to keep our life active in general, be outside as much as we can, go for walks. We have done hiking in the past when we had fewer kids and before we had kids, but we haven't done as much of that lately. So I think that as the life seasons change, the answer will be different, but for now, it's pretty active just taking care of everybody here, and then we'll do walking and stretching, and that's pretty much it. Again, when it comes to exercise, I'm a huge proponent of listening to your body. I don't think that forcing yourself to go out and run when you don't feel like it is a good idea. I think if you feel like going out and running because it feels good, then that would be great. I just don't think that forcing your body to do stuff that doesn't feel good is right because it can be a big stress on your body, which isn't healthy in the long run. So gentle forms of exercise are what I like to go for. Another really good question. What is the best source of collagen for this meat stock? absolutely the best source of collagen. It is very inexpensive and it is made in such a way that it is gentle for even the most damaged and sick people. So of course you can go to the store and buy collagen supplements, but the problem with those is that in the body they react very much like bone broth, which has glutamic acid in it and for very healthy people that can be fine. But for anybody who has leaky gut or any kind of autoimmune system problem or anything like that, then it can actually cause problems. So meat stock is the best source for collagen. It's also very inexpensive. Those collagen supplements can be pricey, but making your own meat stock from cuts of meat that have a bone in them, that's so inexpensive. So best source of collagen, meat stock. question is asking for my review of the Aussie trace minerals. I showed those in the supplements that we take video and so I used, I think I still have the bottle. I used them for a while but what I went to doing actually is just using the really nice mineral salt like Celtic sea salt or the Baja gold and putting that into water when I want minerals and that way it's perfectly balanced, way less expensive and it works really well. So yeah, I think the Aussie trace minerals are great. There could definitely be a place for them, but adding some really high quality mineral salt to your water works really, really well too. While we're on the topic of supplements, another question was what supplements do my kids take? So we try to prioritize food for getting in all the nutrients and everything. That's why we go the extra mile to try to get the best quality food that we can and prepare it the right ways but there are a few things that my, my kids take. The most important one that they take is cod liver oil. So we either do the Rosita cod liver oil or the Green Pastures fermented cod liver oil. They'll both take either one of those. They like e either one just fine. So we'll take those in the morning with breakfast. And then the other one that they take on a regular basis, not always every single day, but on a regular basis is beef liver. So they'll either take the little pieces of raw beef liver. They love them. They gobble them right up. They don't, they like the taste. It's mind blowing and so good. So they'll eat those, they'll ask for it, they'll eat as much as they want and then they're done. They'll also take the freeze dried liver capsules. They'll crunch those up in their mouth. They like the taste of those too. And then the other one that is more of a temporary thing that we're doing right now is something for heavy metal chelation. We go through Dr. Becky Plotner. She ha knows several different protocols for chelating heavy metals, so we're following her recommendations for that. And again, that's just temporary, not something that they'll be taking for 
all the time. But those other two, cod liver oil and beef liver, are really the most important supplements for them. And then for probiotics, we get that from eating lots of fermented food, cultured dairy, fermented vegetables, and that is uh, the best form of probiotics that you can get. Way more value than the commercial supplements, way more powerful, way more variety of beneficial bacteria. So that's what they take. Another question that I got is what do we drink? And this is a really interesting question. This is really good. Um, so we don't usually drink water with meals. Once in a while somebody will be thirsty. But I try to encourage most of the water drinking to be away from meals so that we don't dilute our digestive juices. So I personally will either drink plain water or I'll add some of the mineral salt to the water if I feel like I need minerals. If I feel like I'm drinking water and it's not like quenching my thirst, then I know that I need minerals. So I'll add one teaspoon of mineral salt to a quart of water and let that dissolve and drink that. I actually really like the taste. It might sound kind of weird, but it's good to me. And then my kids drink plain water. Sometimes they'll ask for salt in it too, so I'll give them that at the same ratio. Sometimes for a treat, we'll drink sparkling mineral water and we like to squeeze some fresh lemon juice into that. So that's kind of a nice little treat. We don't have enough raw milk to just be able to drink freely as much as we want of that, unfortunately. We usually save that for culturing into kefir and things like that. But if we happen to build up some extra, then people do like to drink milk once in a while. And then kefir is another big drink that we'll have with meals or like in between meals if somebody's a little bit hungry. And then of course meat stock with meals if we're having a dish to where the meat stock was made together with it or not. If it's a meal that didn't include meat stock, then I'll have some in the fridge and we'll heat that up and eat it along with the meal. We try to do that at least once a day. And then herbal teas we'll kind of use as needed as we feel like we have a need for them if it's upset stomach, sickness, you know, something comes along or we just want to for enjoyment, then we'll, we have different herbal teas that we'll make. So that pretty much is the extent of what we drink. And then the next question is, why did we do myofunctional therapy? So I have some other videos, I think it was a day in the life video where I showed what we were doing that morning and it was our myofunctional mouth exercises. And then I have another video where I showed our tongue tie experience. So if you want to know more about it, you can check out that tongue tie video. But basically, my children were born with tongue ties. And so we I didn't realize that about the first two until later when my third baby was born. And I had a different midwife who was able to recognize that and recommended getting it fixed. I'm so thankful for that. It is life changing, I tell you. When she was first talking about it, I was like, ah, I don't know. We'll see. It can't be that big of a deal. I am so glad I went with it and I will I will share the wonder that is getting tongue ties revised with anybody who will listen because the difference was amazing with what an easy baby he was. And just so many other things that I learned about that it affects too. Posture, stress, like neck and shoulder tension, breathing, whether your teeth are going to be crowded or not so many things, facial structure as they're developing. So I realized, okay, well we should get this done for my other kids too because they have ties. The earlier the better so that they can have a better chance of their face structure forming properly. So since they had already had the ties for a number of years, the mouth, the tongue especially, needs to learn how to move freely once that tie is released. So it's really important to do those exercises for a while before it's released and then for a while afterwards so the tongue gets strong enough and learns how to move like it's supposed to. So that's called myofunctional therapy and that's why we did that, is to strengthen that so that their mouth and tongue could function like it was supposed to once those ties were released. And I did see great benefits with them too. Better sleep, better moods, better speech, so great benefits. And then the last question that I have here is what did we think of TRS? So TRS is the form of like detox heavy metal chelation that you spray. It's a zeolite 
and it's a lab created one so they're all very uniform you spray it in the liquid under your tongue and it's supposed to help chelate heavy metals and get rid of toxins so we tried it for a while i thought that there were some be good benefits um nothing groundbreaking for us um like i mentioned a little bit ago we were still doing another heavy metal chelation with my kids and my husband is doing it too through dr becky plotner and we are seeing amazing benefits with this that we did not see with TRS. Dr. Becky actually told me about TRS, so it's more geared not so much towards heavy metals, although it does do that somewhat, but it's more geared towards like pesticides and contaminants, so it can be helpful. But if you have a heavy metal load, you're probably going to need something more powerful to get rid of that, and not everybody's ready for that right away, but we were at a point where we were, so we went with her protocol that she recommended, and so at the end of the day, I mean, I think TRS is a good product. I would definitely recommend it for anybody who's wanting to just start with something really gentle. And I do think it has great benefits. But yeah, I didn't really notice anything groundbreaking. We did take it for a good long while, very consistently. So I'm sure it did us some good. But for really addressing heavy metals completely, I think a lot of people, us included, need something powerful. So that's why we went more, you know, more powerful. So that's why we went to Dr. Becky. All right, so those are all the questions that I have from you guys. Let me know if you would ever like me to do another one of these Q&A videos. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And then also, like I said, leave me a comment if you wanna know more about any of these topics, if you'd like me to make a whole video around any of these topics. So let me know what you think. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would find it interesting. And if you are new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.